Okay, I wanted to talk about why some of these meters need for you to have them set up with your diabetes specialist nurse. And the reason is that they are taking on board, the, the actual meters are now taking on board bits of pump technology. So they don't, they, they are not pumps in themselves, but going beyond blood testing, beyond just showing you the results from which you might be able to spot patterns, these meters tend now to show you patterns or, or make them more accessible for you to understand. All of this gives you more control in your own life to understand your diabetes and take steps to help control it. At any point in time, you can obviously refer back to your diabetes healthcare team who can talk things through with you and give you advice. For many people, you're on long-acting insulin that you take at night or in the morning or both and short-acting insulin. What these new blood test systems tend to do is help you to assess your dose, your short-acting dose. They're probably going to call it a bolus. And this comes from pump technology where they have bolus wizards. And it's based on algorithms. And the algorithms need certain bits of information about you. And we're all different. And we all have different insulin sensitivity. And we have different um, needs of how much insulin we need for carbohydrates. So one of the things you need to know about is your insulin sensitivity. This is really simply, if, if, for example, you do a blood test and you're at 10 millimoles per litre, if you take a unit of insulin, how far will that unit bring you down? Now, for some people, it might just bring you down one millimole. Some will bring you down about two millimoles. Me, for example, it'll probably bring me down to three millimoles. So one unit of insulin will bring me down about three millimoles. So that's my insulin sensitivity. That is something that you'll need to plug into some of these cleverer machines and it's going to help the machine to calculate bolus advice for you based on your sensitivity. The other aspect is your insulin to carbohydrate ratio. Now this is where it gets really complicated because that can vary through the day. Often people are surprised to find out that they're told that they have dawn phenomenon well, everyone does, that is not news. Absolutely everyone has dawn phenomenon. Normal people and diabetics, in order to get out of bed in the morning, your body chucks sugar out into the system. It's nothing to do with your diabetes, it is what the body does to get you out of bed. What it means is that usually first thing in the morning, you're gonna need more insulin for 10 grams of carbohydrate than you might do at lunchtime or particularly in the evening. So there might be a range of ratios through the day. So an example of how your ratios might change in the day. In an ideal world, one unit of insulin can cover 10 grams of carbohydrate, or what a lot of people call one carbohydrate exchange or carbohydrate portion. I'm just going to talk in grams. So you know, on a good day, in an ideal world, one unit of insulin will cover 10 grams of carbohydrate. So if you have a packet of sandwiches, brown bread, chicken, sandwiches, that's going to be 40 grams of carbohydrate and probably four units of insulin. Things aren't usually that simple. Now, you might have a ratio of two to one for your insulin to carbohydrates in the morning, which means that for the same 40 grams of carbohydrate, you'd need to take eight units of insulin. By lunchtime, you might be one and a half units of insulin per 10 grams of carbohydrate. So that's 1.5 to 1 as a ratio. So you've gone from 2 to 1 to 1.5 to 1. And by the evening, you might be actually at 1 to 1. But in the morning, it would mean 8 grams, 8, sorry, in the morning, it would make, mean 8 units of insulin. At lunchtime, it would mean 6 units of insulin. And by the evening, it would mean 4 units of insulin. Once these things are put into your meter, that information's already in your meter. So that as you go through the day, depending on the time, depending on your blood test result, depending on the amount of carbohydrates you're about to eat, all of which is in the meter, it is going to give you advice that's specific to you. Um, it takes a bit of the weight off in terms of the maths, and it, it, it makes the meters more than just blood test meters. It, they're more of a sort of companion um, and, and ongoing healthcare advisor for you. Hence the fact that with a couple of these meters, you actually do need a diabetes specialist nurse to help set it up. 
Um, and in fact, you can't get hold of either the Insulinx meter, part of the freestyle range from Abbott, or the, um, the expert meter from AccuCheck from Roche, uh, because these need to be set up by DSNs. Because the advice that these meters give you could, could have a direct influence on your control. It could even be dangerous if it's, if it's incorrectly put in. You know, people can easily mistake 40 units of insulin for four units, you know, simple mistakes like that, but it could go well out of whack. So it's set up with somebody else. Then later, if things change, and they nearly always will, you can adjust them 